global warming blooper adding fuel to the dispute over climate change. The United Nations top climate panel is backtracking on its controversial warning that the Himalayan glaciers or glaciers could vanish by the year 2035. Now that warning first came out in 2007 and it sparked massive concern as millions of people in Asia depend on the glaciers for water. But now the UN's panel on climate change says, quote, the clear and well-established standards of evidence were not applied properly. Well, the 2035 date for the glacier's evaporation stemmed from a 1999 magazine interview with leading glaciologist Saeed Hasnain. But he says he was misquoted and never made that prediction. Well, critics say the revelations are another example that the global warming threat is vastly overblown. And they aren't surprising to India's environment minister who had already discounted any climate-related link. The issues related to the Himalayan glaciers have been represented in a very unscientific manner. Well, the panel, uh, the UN uh, climate panel, shared the Nobel Peace Prize with Al Gore in 2007, the same year that it warned that the Himalayan glaciers could melt perilously fast. Well, many people took the alarm very seriously, as uh, Rob Marciano shows us in this report that first aired in April 2007 on CNN. Perhaps the most troubling finding is that by the end of the century, floods will permanently displace hundreds of millions of people as low-lying coastal areas are swallowed up by rising sea levels. With a meter or two of sea level rise, we're likely to see hundreds of millions of what we'll call environmental refugees, people who no longer can live where they had lived for maybe thousands of years. The report predicts that where it's wet and hot, insect-borne diseases such as malaria will explode. Where it's dry, it's likely to become much drier, and some water supplies will vanish, notably the glaciers in the Himalayas, the key water source for hundreds of millions of Asians, and the deserts will expand. Well, we're going to hear from the glaciologist uh, Saeed Hasnain and the UN Climate Panel's Vice Chairman in a moment. Before that, this is not the first time the panel has been embroiled in controversy. Paula Newton uh, takes us back now to November's Climate Gate. We have not heard the last of the so-called Climate Gate affair. Now, to remind everyone, a few weeks before the Copenhagen Climate Change Conference that happened at the end of last year, the University of East Anglia here in England, where there is that influential climate research unit, emails from that unit were either stolen and leaked or were just leaked. This was very, very controversial because the allegation from those emails was that the scientists were trying to skew the evidence. Now, there are two investigations ongoing. One is a criminal investigation as to how these emails got out there. Um, those in charge of that investigation told CNN that it is still a long way off from being complete and that it will be very complicated. But a separate independent inquiry um, it will get underway in the next few weeks. Now, Lord Nigel Lawson, the author um, of the book, A Cool Look at Global Warming, he was one of the first people to ask for this type of an inquiry. And he maintains right now that it must be an open and very public inquiry. Confidence needs to be restored in science. And if there is an inquiry behind closed doors, I think it is unlikely that uh, there will be this restoration of confidence. These emails, the leak of these emails, the theft of these emails, it was significant, wasn't it? It, it was very significant. It was very significant indeed. There had been suspicions uh, that uh, the, uh, what was going on at the Climatic Research Unit uh, was not entirely OK, not entirely kosher, if you like, uh, because of the refusal to disclose the raw data. That had made people a lot of made a lot of people suspicious. But nevertheless, um, it was only when the emails came to light uh, which showed uh, how, de how determined they had been uh, to try and hide things, how determined they had been to suppress views which disagreed with their views, and how they had been apparently uh, playing tricks, it was their own word in one of the emails, a trick, playing tricks with the data, that really um, pushed the whole thing right out in the open. 
Now, during this inquiry, those scientists from the University of East Anglia will get a chance really to respond to that. And they say that these emails were blown out of proportion and that it was a misunderstanding. But you know, these emails, this whole climate gate affair has changed the science, has changed the way the science is looked at uh, in the whole climate debate. And many people on either side of this debate say that's a good thing, that the science does need to have more scrutiny and that at this point in time, this kind of an inquiry can really help clarify what is going on in this debate. We expect some results from that inquiry in late spring. Paula Newton for you with some context for this. Well, I uh, spoke a short time ago with Professor Saeed Hasnain and the Vice Chair of the uh, UN Climate Panel. I started by asking Hasnain why he didn't shout earlier about the mistake if he'd read the report. Take a listen to this. Uh, really uh, gone to this report in detail and once uh, I've read it uh, mm. very cursely and I say that there are some mistakes but uh, uh, I didn't point out All right. to, to okay. any higher authorities in that. All right, fair enough. Um, to the IPC and Jean-Pascal, why when alerted did the IPC uh, do nothing? When open criticism uh, about this began last year, it was effectively dismissed by the head of the IPCC, Rajendra Pachari, who actually Professor Said has named, now works for in India. As soon as the IPCC leadership was made aware of, of the mistake, uh, it took its responsibility, recognized that uh, a, a mistake or series of mistakes had been done and um, very humbly uh, recognized that um, uh, it was not uh, handled properly. I mean, the procedure, the IPCC mm. procedure, which are very strict in this, for this particular section, you, should, you have to realize it's a one page um, uh, section in a 3,000 page uh, report and uh, it's not because the procedures have not been applied properly for, for right. that one page right. uh, that it uh, decreases the credibility of the entire well, report. We'll, we'll, on the we'll, we'll discuss that. We'll discuss that. Hold on for one second. Uh, Professor Said has named, uh, can anybody give a date to anything in science? No, no, it's not possible, particularly in these kind of sciences where you are dealing with the natural system. How you can give a date and the, nobody is an astrologer to give any particular date? All right, uh, John Pascal, we've just heard from Professor Hasnain there saying we can't put any date on anything scientific. Uh, to a layperson by, like myself, that is deeply disturbing, given that we are being told uh, by the likes of your organisation time and time again that we have to change our behaviour by 2025 at the earliest or we are all doomed. Well, the IPCC has never said that that way, and the IPCC is very cautious in the way it expresses itself and usually gives, gives a range of dates and, and not a single date for something to happen. So, for example, uh, or range of numbers, it says that if we don't reduce our emissions, climate is going to warm between now and the end of this century by approximately one to six degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's a, a wide interval, uh, and it doesn't give a single number. It doesn't predict that climate is going to warm by 2.75 degrees Celsius, for example. So, you know, the IPCC is cautious and is not giving a single number on those issues usually. I mean, this particular uh, glacier uh, issue, the Himalayan glacier issue, a mistake was made. Right, okay. It is recognized, right, okay. and we are trying, going to try to learn from this mistake to try to avoid that in the future. That's the most important thing. Th this admission, though, you, you, you're going to have to admit to me uh, that a prediction in your landmark report was, and I quote, poorly substantiated and resulted from lapses in judgment is sure to encourage climate change uh, cynics, especially in the light of the scandal involving the uh, hacked emails last year before the Copenhagen conference. You must be incredibly concerned, aren't you? Well, you know, on the contrary, you could claim that this whole event gave the opportunity to the IPCC to show that it's ready to recognize a mistake when a mistake is done. So let's look at this very calmly. Uh, see that the IPCC, contrary to what some of the skeptics are saying, is able to recognize it has done a mistake when a real mistake has been done and is uh, ready to learn from its mistake. So, on the contrary, this could actually increase the credibility of the IPCC if you, if you stand back a little bit from, from the whole thing.